I dress as a uh, I dress as a medieval character because that's the uh, type of persona I would like to uh, to recreate where people would wander around the countryside into your small towns and tell stories of things that you would never heard of maybe news from the coast or of the Crusades um, but certainly 500 a thousand years ago you probably never got outside the parameters of your county in your lifetime so a bard was always a welcomed visitor to a visitor to a small village the uh, the poetry that I draw from is generally from the 19th century because for whatever reason back then they liked to tell stories and uh, this one was written uh, 1887 and I would like to dedicate this to my my uh, deceased maternal grandfather who uh, was uh, panhandling for a drink in a bar in Helena, Montana. Totally destitute one morning, waiting for a doctor's appointment he had at one o'clock in the afternoon to go see about the cancer that was killing him. He never made the appointment. He died on a bar stool. He's buried in a pauper's grave in Helena. And I would like to dedicate this poem to Frank Coates. The face upon the floor. It was a balmy summer evening and a goodly crowd was there, which well nigh filled Joe's bar room on the corner of the square. And as songs and witty stories came through the open door, a vagabond crept slowly in and posed upon the floor. Where did it come from? Someone said. Oh, the wind is blowing it in. What does it want? Another cried. Some whiskey, rum, or gin? Here. Toby, sick him. If your stomach's equal to the work, I wouldn't touch him with a fork. He's as filthy as his shirt. This badinage the poor wretch took with stoical good grace. In fact, he smiled as though he thought he'd struck the proper place. Come, boys, I know there's kindly hearts among so good a crowd. To be in such good company would make a deacon proud. Give me a drink. That's what I want. I'm out of funds, you know. When I had cash to treat the gang, this hand was never slow. What? You laugh as though you thought this pocket never held a sou? I once was fixed as well, my boys, as any one of you. There, thanks. That's braced me nicely. God bless you one and all. Next time I pass this good saloon, I'll pay another call. Give you a song. No, I can't do that. My singing days are past. My throat is cracked, my voice worn out, and my lungs are growing fast. Say, give me another whiskey and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you a funny story. And in fact, I promise to, that I was ever a decent man, not one of you would think, but I was some four or five years ago. Say, give me another drink. Fill her up, boys. I want to put some life into my brains. Such little drinks for a man like me are miserably tame. Five fingers. There, that's the trick. And cork and whiskey, too. Well, here's luck, boys. And landlord, my best regards to you. You've treated me pretty kindly, and I'd like to tell you how I came to be the dirty sot you see before you now. As I told you once, I was a man of muscle, frame, and health, and but for a blunder, ought to have made considerable wealth. I was a painter, not one that daubed on bricks and wood, but an artist, and for my age was rated pretty good. I worked hard at my canvas and was bidding fair to rise, for gradually I saw the star of fame before. I made a picture, perhaps you've seen, tis called the chase of fame. It brought me 1,500 pounds and added to my name. And then I met a woman, now comes the funny part, with eyes that petrified my brain and sunk into my heart. Why don't you laugh? It is funny that the vagabond you see could ever love another and expect her love for me, but twas so. And for a month or two her smiles were freely given, and when her loving lips touched mine, they carried me to heaven. 
Did you ever see a woman for whom your soul you'd give with the form like the Milo Venus, too beautiful to live, with eyes that beat the Kohenor, with a wealth of chestnut hair, if so, twas she, for there never was another half so fair. I was working on a portrait one afternoon in May of a fair-haired boy, a friend of mine, who lived across the way, and Madeline admired it, and much to my surprise said that she'd like to know the man who had such dreamy eyes. Well, it didn't take long to know him, and before the month had flown, my friend had stolen my darling, and I was left alone. And before a year of misery had passed above my head, the jewel I had treasured so had tarnished and was dead. That's why I took to drink, boys, why I never saw you smile. I thought you'd be amused and laughing all the while. What? What's the matter, friend? There's a teardrop in your eye. Come laugh with me. Tis only babes and women that should cry. Say, boys, if you give me just another whiskey, I'll be glad, and I'll draw right here the picture of the face that drove me mad. Give me that piece of chalk with which you mark the baseball score. You shall see the lovely Madeline upon the barroom floor. Another drink, and with chalk in hand, the vagabond began to draw a face that well might buy the soul of any man. And as he placed another lock upon the shapely head, with a fearful scream, he leaped and fell across the picture, dead. The face upon the floor, ladies and gentlemen. Hugh Antoine.